What's going on everyone? In this video, I'm going to give you 7 tips and tricks on how you can edit your talking head videos for YouTube. So a ton of videos on YouTube are talking head videos. What's a talking head video? It's just a video where it's just you and the camera, you're talking straight to the camera, nothing else, and that's most of the video itself. It's just, you just see a talking head. That, I mean, kind of sounds self-explanatory, but hey, you know, sometimes people need an explanation. But anyways, when it comes to these videos, you need to really edit them in a way that's going to keep your audience entertained for the whole duration of the video. For example, if you look back at some of my earlier videos, you'll see that a lot of the talking head ones that I did were probably a little too much talking head. You saw too much of me and it ended up getting a little boring because nobody just wants to stare at somebody's face for 10 plus minutes all the time just hearing them talk. There needs to be a little special breakup that happens in the video that keeps your audience entertained and engaged for your video. Now how do you do this? Well, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to give you seven tips and tricks on how you can edit your talking head videos for YouTube. These tips and tricks are gonna allow you to have a much more entertaining video in the end. And when you have a more entertaining video, your audience is gonna stick around for a longer time. And when you have them sticking around for a longer time, you're more than likely gonna start having a more popular videos, more subscribers, more fan interaction, and yeah, that is what you want on YouTube. You want everything, you want all the popularity, so that's what these tips and tricks are gonna do for you. Now the first tip I have for you is editing the audio waveforms. When you first start editing your video, edit the audio waveforms. Don't look at anything else in the video, look at just the audio waveforms. Now why do you wanna edit your video like this at first? It's because it's gonna speed up the entire editing process. From personal experience, I know how easy it is to get caught up in all of the visuals and how your video actually looks. However, if you focus on just the audio at first, your process is gonna be a lot faster, trust me. You're gonna be able to cut out any awkward pauses, any mess ups that you have, trust me, you're gonna have a ton of them and that's okay. You're gonna be able to cut all that out pretty quickly if you're just editing the waveforms. Now if we take a look at my computer, I can show you what some of these waveforms look like. Now when you're looking at this timeline, I edit in Final Cut Pro, so that breaks up the visual, the actual picture, and the audio. It splits those into two. Now my main focus on my first edit of the videos that I do is always on the waveforms. So I look at the waveforms and I just cut out any long pauses that I know shouldn't be there in my video. Then I actually go through again and listen and when I hear all of the mess ups that I have, I cut those out where appropriate. Again, I don't focus on the visuals because the visuals is something that I like to focus on last. I believe once I get the audio correct throughout the entire video, then adding in all the visuals is gonna be much easier in the end. And I think it's a lot faster to just keep going through and go back, go through and go back, go through and go back. Instead of actually trying to edit the audio and add in visuals all at the same time throughout the entire edit. When you're editing talking head videos, this is just something that I feel helps speed up the editing process and it's gonna help you have videos that are much smoother from start to finish. Tip number two for editing your talking head videos is using B-roll. Now what exactly is B-roll? Pay attention. In a talking head video, B-roll is gonna be a cutaway to something else so that it kind of breaks up the video. Like I said earlier, just staring at somebody talk for 10 minutes is gonna get boring at some point. So you need to do something to actually break up the footage. And one way to do this is to add in other types of visuals like B-roll. B-roll is gonna be something that really relates to what you're actually talking about. So right now you're looking at B-roll of me actually editing the video. Yes, it's of me actually editing this video right here and this is what the B-roll is gonna be. At least for this part of the video anyway. Using B-roll like this helps provide a different type of visual for your audience and it might even help them understand the information you're trying to give them even better. Hell, there are some channels out there that only use B-roll in their videos. Nothing is wrong with B-roll. B-roll is a great tool that everybody on YouTube should use at some point, especially if they're only doing talking head videos. So yeah, B-roll, use it, use it effectively. It's gonna come in handy. It's gonna help you connect with your audience a little bit better. And that is what you want in the end. Tip number three, reframing your footage. Now, when you wanna reframe your footage, this just basically means zooming in, zooming out, changing the way the camera is in the middle of your shot. So you may have seen in some videos where the person's talking and then out of nowhere you get a quick zoom in like this. 
and then it comes back out to the normal setting and then it just goes from there. That is simply reframing the footage. The reason you do this is to kind of hide some jump cuts because sometimes jump cuts can be a little harsh and it takes away from the smoothness of the video. Now I know on YouTube jump cuts are okay, but in other platforms jump cuts are something that can really take away from the overall quality of the video. So in a lot of courses I create, I love reframing the footage just so I can try and keep that smoothness from start to finish between each video. Now what's the best way to actually reframe your footage? That happens when you film in 4K. When you film in 4K, it's gonna be a lot easier to reframe your footage without losing quality. If you film in anything lower than 4K, then you're gonna run the risk of losing quality whenever you try to reframe your footage. So with 4K, I'm filming in 4K right now. I can zoom in pretty far without losing any quality. However, if I film in something like 1080p, then if I zoom in that same amount, I will lose a bit of quality. And when you set a standard for yourself to have a certain type of quality for your videos, you're not gonna wanna change that no matter what which is why I'm filming in 4K now, because I made one video in 4K, I do certain things, and now I feel like I have to do every video in 4K because I don't wanna lose that quality that I set for myself. And I know it's difficult sometimes, some of us may not have the capability of filming in 4K, some of us may not have enough storage to actually film our entire video in 4K. There are a lot of limitations, but if you have the option to film in 4K, I suggest it just because it allows you to have a lot more diversity when you're actually editing your talking head videos. All right, tip number four. Now, this is one that can be very easy to get carried away with, but I think it's very important for editing your videos because it adds that little bit of extra coolness to your videos. And that is gonna be adding on-screen animations. Now, what are on-screen animations? They're just little things like this or something like this, or I can just add some text where I say, look right here, and just things like that pop up on the screen. Little things like that are gonna be visually captivating to your audience and it's gonna keep them engaged in your videos. So because of that, that's automatically gonna make your talking head videos that much more interesting. Now I think it's pretty easy to tell how you can easily get carried away with this because you don't wanna add too much of this. Adding too many on-screen animations is just gonna become a distraction. However you find the right balance and add just enough on-screen animations, you're gonna be perfect. Remember, you don't want to distract your audience, you want to keep them engaged in the video. So having too many animations on your screen, that's going to distract your audience instead of keeping them engaged. Now a distracted audience may stick around and watch your entire video, however, they may not really get the information they came for. And when that happens, those same people aren't going to come back to your other videos because they didn't get what they came to your videos for. Now when you have just the right amount and you keep your audience engaged, those people are gonna keep coming back to your videos because they know what to expect and they know you're gonna provide them with the information that you're gonna give them. A lot of people come to YouTube for a certain reason. They come to find certain information. So if you can provide them that information but do it in an entertaining way that they find captivating, you're gonna, those same people are gonna keep coming back to your future videos. Tip number five, use the morph effect. The morph effect basically merges two separate clips together, making it look like one clip. So instead of having a jump cut like this where I'm over here, and then all of a sudden I'm over here, just like that, the morph cut will blend those two together so it'll look something like this. I'll start over here, and then when the morph happens, I'm over here. As you can tell, there's clearly something that happens in that transition. There's a little alien type kind of vibe from it. That's, that's the vibe I get from the morph cut anyway when there's a lot of movement that happens. But if I have very minimal movement, so if I'm like this, and then all of a sudden I'm like this, you're not gonna see much movement because I'm relatively in the same spot. Now be careful with morph cuts because you don't wanna overdo that either. Morph cuts can be a little too much if you're just using it every single time. That's why you kind of need to use a couple of the previous tricks to kind of hide certain cuts so that you're not just having morph cut, morph cut, morph cut, morph cut in your timeline. Speaking of timeline, let's, let's just look at the timeline and use the morph cut again just so I can show you exactly how easy it is to add to most of your timelines. Now again, I'm using Final Cut Pro. I found this morph effect on the internet. Yes, some effects you do have to pay for. Sometimes there's effects that actually come with the program, but I like the morph effect, so we're gonna use this. Now all I do, click the morph effect, I drag it over to where I want the morph to happen, drop it, morph happens, this is how it looks, and there you go. Piggybacking off that last tip and moving on to the sixth tip, and that is try to stay in the same spot. 
No more cut is gonna be pretty seamless if you stay in the same area whenever you feel like the pause is gonna happen in your video. Now, for example, I have a ton of pauses. I can't talk for 10 minutes straight, nonstop. There's always gonna be certain pauses within my speaking. And this is something I do a terrible job at. I don't always stay in the same spot because I like to talk with my hands. I like to move around a lot when I'm speaking. So it's kind of hard to remember exactly what position I was in when I stop speaking or I mess up. Now, if I am talking and I do mess up and I know I'm in the same spot I was when I start talking again, using a morph cut for me isn't gonna be a problem because the transition is gonna be very seamless. I'm gonna use an example of a morph cut and I'm gonna see if you can tell exactly where it is. Could you tell where the morph was? I actually used three morphs in that sequence. That's how seamless a morph cut can be when you use it properly and you stay in the same position. Now, I don't typically use a lot of morph cuts nowadays, but it's definitely something that can be very useful for you in your talking head videos. Now moving on to our seventh and our final tip, and that is gonna be, don't be scared to change locations while you're filming. Now I know this isn't really part of the editing process, but it's gonna be something that really adds a unique touch to all of your videos. Now, if you couldn't tell, I changed locations a few times in this video. I think that helps keep the audience engaged. I think that's gonna keep you engaged because when you see a little change like that, you're, I feel like you're gonna notice it, but it's not gonna be actively noticed while you're watching the video. You're gonna be like, oh, whoa, something looks a little different here. And when that happens, you're gonna wanna figure out exactly what is different and a lot of the time it's just gonna be a simple change of scenery like this. A change of scenery can be very good for your audience. As I said earlier, breaking up the video is gonna be good because it's just not gonna be you talking for 10 minutes and people staring at you for that entire duration. That's gonna get a little boring. You need to change things around so that your audience stays engaged throughout your whole video. And when they're engaged throughout your whole video, they're gonna watch your whole video and that's only gonna help you in the end when it comes to YouTube and all of your talking head videos. Now a nice change of scenery is gonna be great. You don't really need to do much to change scenery. I could change it to that wall over there or that wall over there. Those, those walls don't look good right now, so I'm not gonna do that. But as you can tell, I have different locations where I know I can film. So if you know of a few different areas where you can do that, don't be scared to change things up because it's gonna help your audience stay engaged for longer in your videos. There you have it, seven tips and tricks on how you should edit your talking head videos. The good thing about all of these tricks is that they're very simple to actually implement. So don't be scared to test them out. These are little things that can really help improve your videos. Now what I wanna know in the comments below, I wanna know what tip or trick you feel is gonna be most useful to you. Now you have seven options to choose from, so it might take a little bit to figure out which one you're most excited for, because most of us are gonna be excited for all of them, and I, I understand, the, these are good tricks that you're, gonna, that you're gonna need. So yeah, just leave a comment below, tell me which one you're most excited for. And since I have your full attention still, follow me on Instagram, at daretogram, and I'm getting into the TikTok game now, so that's gonna be fun. Don't worry, I'm not gonna be doing all the dancing and all that. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm still gonna be providing you with a lot of tips and tricks that you can use for photography and video. Now, my TikTok is at Dare to Capture, just like the title of this channel. And speaking of this channel, if you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to subscribe. Yeah, hit that. It's, it's, it's a nice red button, you can't miss it. It says subscribe. Be sure to hit that for me. And you might as well hit the like button as well. So we're, we're all happy in the end when that happens. But yeah, that's all I got for you. And uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.